At the age of 27, he went from being one of the next faces of the NFL to not even wanted by his own team. The biggest problem, and I'll end it like this, Zeke has a first team name with second team game. Here is the story of the rise and fall of Ezekiel Elliott. From the moment he took his first breath, it was crystal clear that Elliott was going to be a star athlete. His mom and dad attended the University of Missouri, where his dad was a linebacker and his mom ran track after winning a high school state championship in three different sports. On top of that, his grandfather attended Drake University, where he played basketball, and his uncle played ball professionally overseas. So nobody in the Elliott family was surprised when Zeke excelled at every sport he played. Growing up, he played basketball, baseball, and of course, football. Elliott quickly earned a reputation for his playing style that was extremely uncommon for a kid. While playing running back during a scrimmage, he kept laying out the same defender over and over again, even though he didn't have the ball. People watching were confused why Elliott was going so hard without the ball, so someone asked him why he kept doing this, and he responded, Coach says you don't block, you don't get the ball. While almost any other player at that age would only care about scoring touchdowns, Elliott was already thinking about and working on blocking out of the backfield. It was a mindset that hinted at big things to come for the youngster. In high school, he was a three-sport varsity athlete, starring on the foot football, basketball, and track teams. With all three of them, Elliot relied on a very special combination of power and speed. Someone that strong simply wasn't supposed to be able to move at the speeds he could. Elliot showed this off on the track while dominating the competition. As a senior, he won state championships in four different events, the 100-meter dash, the 200-meter dash, 110-meter high hurdles, and the 300-meter hurdles. Elliot added one more trophy to his shelf by being named the State of Missouri's Gatorade Track Athlete of the Year. On the football field, he leaned on this otherworldly ability to become nearly unstoppable by running defenses over or simply outrunning them. As a junior, he rushed for 1,802 yards and 34 touchdowns, while adding in 401 receiving yards and six more touchdowns. Then, as a senior, Elliott ran for 2,155 yards and 40 touchdowns, while totaling over 3,000 all-purpose yards and 50 scores. After having torn it up on the gridiron and the track, Elliott established himself as a highly rated consensus four-star football recruit. He was highly sought after by top programs around the nation, like Ohio State, Florida State, Arkansas, and Missouri. There was plenty of pressure on him to follow in his parents' footsteps and pick Missouri, but Elliott ultimately decided to start his own legacy and committed to the Buckeyes. I'll be taking my talents to Columbus, to The Ohio State University. However, he was forced to wait his turn before he could begin writing his own story. During Elliott's freshman season at OSU, he only carried the ball 30 times and primarily played special teams. The following year, Elliott finally got his chance to prove himself when the running back ahead of him left for the NFL. Zeke seized the moment and exploded onto the college football scene, finishing with 1,878 rushing yards, the second most for one season in the program's storied history. In OSU's two playoff games, with all eyes glued on him, he ran for 470 76 yards and six touchdowns, on his way to leading the Buckeyes to a national title. Elliott then followed up this storybook season the next year by rushing for 1,821 yards and 23 touchdowns. Feeling like there was nothing left to show, he gave up his final year of eligibility and declared for the 2016 NFL Draft. Despite playing for only three seasons and being the starter in just two of them, Elliott managed to finish second all-time on OSU's career rushing yards list with 4,410 and fourth all-time in in rushing touchdowns with 44. Heading into the draft, he had earned a reputation for being one of the most complete running backs in recent memory. On top of being a versatile threat out of the backfield with his ability to catch and run the ball, Elliott was also an extremely effective pass blocker. It's why, in an era where teams no longer believe in building around running backs, the Cowboys still took Elliott with the fourth overall pick. With the numbers he put up in college and the unusually high draft pick used on him as a running back, Elliott was expected to shine in Dallas on day one. Unlike his fellow rookies, there was no time to adjust to playing at the next level. Ahead of week one of his rookie season, he was named the Cowboys starting back. And things got off to a far from ideal start for him. In the season opener, he had just 51 rushing yards on 20 carries. Then in week two, he had 21 carries for 83 yards and fumbled twice. Even though it was still very early in the year, people began to question if Dallas had reached in drafting Elliott. The next few games were going to be crucial for not only proving them wrong, 
long, but also boosting Elliott's self-confidence. In each of the following four games, Elliott rushed for over 100 yards, for a total of 569 rushing yards. Elliott built off this sudden momentum and finished the year rushing for 1,631 yards and 15 touchdowns. As just a rookie, he led the league in rushing yards and was third in rushing touchdowns. With the third most rushing yards in a season by a rookie in league history, Elliott was named first-team All-Pro. In the postseason that year, Elliott rose to the occasion and had 125 rushing yards in the Cowboys' 34-31 divisional round loss to the Packers. He became just the second rookie in franchise history to rush over 100 yards in a playoff game. In what felt like the blink of an eye, Elliott had gone from being labeled a potential bust to a certified young star. He had the perfect combination of athleticism, power, and speed, where he could beat defenses however he wanted. Whether it was hurtling, trucking, or leaving them in the dust, Elliott seemed borderline unstoppable. But just when it looked like he had it all figured out, Elliott's world came crashing down. A month before the 2017 season, the NFL suspended Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott has been suspended for six games. He's the first player disciplined under the NFL's new domestic violence policy. After a year-long investigation due to Aki accusations of domestic violence against his ex-girlfriend. This led to a series of appeals by Elliott that actually allowed him to play in Dallas's first eight games. After no shortage of back and forth between courts and judges, Elliott, halfway into the season, finally accepted a six-game suspension. Playing in only 10 games that year, he finished with 983 rushing yards and seven rushing touchdowns. His absence was certainly felt by the Cowboys, who missed the playoffs after going 13-3 the year before. Heading into the 2018 campaign, Elliott knew that showing up out on the field would be the only way to get people to stop talking about his actions off of it. He came out of the gate as a man on a mission, and in his first four games totaled 426 rushing yards and 125 receiving yards. As the year went on, Elliott channeled all his frustrations and punished defenses with his bulldozing running style. He also turned on the Jets with his breakaway speed when he didn't feel like running over guys. In his second full season of playing, Elliott again took home the league rushing title with 1,400 34 yards on the ground. He also added 567 receiving yards for good measure, as he was named to his second Pro Bowl. His dominant play led the Cowboys back into the postseason and earned them a matchup with the Seahawks in the wildcard round. In that game, Elliott put the team on his back, rushing for 137 yards and a touchdown in a 24-22 victory. Then, in Dallas's divisional round game against the Rams, he was locked down and limited to just 47 yards on 20 carries in a 30-22 loss. This left a sour taste in Elliott's mouth after an impressive bounce-back season, but it didn't stop him from believing that he deserved to get paid big time that offseason. So after the Cowboys picked up the fifth-year option on his contract, Elliott, during training camp, held out and demanded an extension. Just before the 2019 season was set to begin, Dallas finally caved, signing him to a six-year extension worth $90 million, with $50 million of it guaranteed. It made Elliott the highest-paid running back in the league. Anytime a player inks a massive contract like that, the following year, they're expected to take their play and their team to another level. For Elliott and the Cowboys, that didn't exactly happen. He put together a solid season with 1,357 rushing yards, fourth most in the league, but the team went 8-8 eight and eight and missed the playoffs. 2020 was supposed to be the year where Dallas figures it out and Elliott reclaims his throne as top running back in the league. It was indeed a turning point for both parties, just not in the right direction. As the team went 6-10, and 10, Elliott finished with only 979 rushing yards and six rushing touchdowns. It was the lowest rushing total of his career, even lower than the season in which he was suspended for six games. People wondered if this was just a fluke for him or if it was the new norm. Playing all 17 games in 2021, Elliott only had 1,002 rushing yards. The explosiveness he had used to become a star just wasn't there anymore, and this time his struggles didn't bring the team down with him. The Cowboys went 12-5 and and began to lean on someone else in the running game to carry the load. With Elliott having lost a step, Tony Pollard had his coming out party, rushing for 719 yards while averaging 5.5 yards per carry. He went from being known as Elliott's backup to fans calling for him to get more touches or or even be the starting back. But Dallas was in a delicate position. It wasn't long since they had made Elliott the highest paid back in the league, and they weren't about to just give up on him. So in 2022, the Cowboys ditched the traditional starter and backup setup to implement a split two-man running game. As they did this, it became clear that one player was just better or more effective than the other. That season, Elliott finished with 876 rushing yards on 3.8 yards per carry. He was his first three years in the league, and every year from that point, 
it was decline, decline, decline. While Pollard had 1,007 rushing yards on 5.2 yards per carry. Elliott had gone from one of the top backs in the league to a glorified short yardage power back. It was a tough pill to swallow for Dallas given his contract situation, but there was no hiding it anymore. Numbers don't lie, and Pollard had to be the number one guy moving forward. So, during this offseason, the Cowboys did something that would have once been completely unthinkable. On March 15th, they released Elliott. The Cowboys are releasing Ezekiel Elliott, former rushing champion. He was set to count $16.7 million against the salary cap, and the team realized he simply wasn't worth that anymore. By cutting him, Dallas saved nearly $11 million against the 2023 cap. Meanwhile, they franchise-tagged Pollard for just over $10 million. At the age of 27, Elliott still has plenty of time to prove the Cowboys wrong and show the world that he's capable of much more than what he's done recently. But landing in another split backfield with the Patriots this season, it looks like his days as a bell cow back may be over. Only time will tell whether Elliott was a flash in the pan or if these were nothing more than a couple of down years.